Now, if you don't know, there's been some hot drama on the app formerly known as Twitter, where one of the biggest Twitch streamers, XQC, is involved in some drama, being called out for reacting to an entire 1 hour and 30 minute video and re-uploading it to YouTube. His response wasn't great honestly mainly just saying uh you know i'm I'm getting money I, I don't really care and i've seen a lot of people shocked a lot of twitch streamers and a lot of very popular youtubers jumping on xqc and insulting him and belittling him and i don't understand why now i'm no xqc fan by any means of the word like yeah sure he's being an asshole but they're acting as if xqc is an outlier when almost every mainstream Twitch streamer relies on React content for their revenue stream. As I've said before in other videos, I don't really like Twitch streamers. I think their content is extremely lazy and boring. And with this whole drama going down, I wanted to throw my hat into the ring. And before I continue, having a couple of reactions on Twitch doesn't make you the devil incarnate. If you have fans, it's more than likely you'll have been asked to react to a couple of videos especially on the Twitch scene. This video is rather focused on people whose whole form of content creation is sitting in front of a camera, sometimes in complete silence, and adding very little to the original video, besides, oh shit, wow, or some stupid soy jack face. As a matter of fact, I'm a firm believer that Anything can be entertaining if you have a strong enough personality to push through the dull parts of whatever you may be doing. But most of these popular Twitch streamers don't seem to understand the problem with React videos. And in order to properly enunciate my ideas, I've chosen a very popular Twitch streamer to use as an example. None other than Twitch's very own Hassan Piker. Like Hassan wanted to not be streaming anymore, but didn't want to lose those... Uh, stream dollars Dude, what am i supposed to do die like i don't understand now i've made it semi-apparent that i'm not too fond of Hassan piker so much so that i can explain why in a different video but try my best to be as unbiased but critical as possible of a portion of his August 5th live stream. All of the content i use will be part of a 30 minute portion of his 8 hour live stream. I feel like this 30 minutes best shows the obvious flaws that a lot of these Twitch streamers hold when it comes to lazy content creation. Let's get scratching. Now, a lot of Twitch reactors try to argue the idea that React content isn't as big of a deal as a lot of people make it out to be, saying that none of the accounts reacted to have spoken up about any sort of theft in profits or views, so that would imply that people have no issue with their content being reacted to. What you have to realize is that YouTube works on an algorithm-based system. The only way YouTubers can get discovered on the app is by hoping that people click on their video through the impressions. That being the amount of times your video has been shown up and people suggested. Now, let's say some talentless schlump decides to react to one of my videos, then uploads the full video of their reaction to the main site I look for an audience on. And then for example's sake, let's just say they literally ripped my thumbnail entirely, and the only difference is they just put their face in the corner doing a soy jack or looking shocked or something. The algorithm will now see my video and the one of the more popular and recognizable person and choose to instead boost that one, making the impressions they got from their reaction taking the place of other smaller content creators. You see, Twitch streamers have done this really genius thing where they market Twitch streaming as a way to socialize or make new friends. But in reality, you are paying $5 to watch someone sleep. More viewers when I'm asleep than I'm awake. <laughs> what? It's crazy. Are you kidding? No. When I'm asleep, it'll spike to 20k. You see, parasocial relationships play a massive role in reaction content. Twitch streamers constantly selling this as a way to not feel as lonely. But this mentality is not only not true, but a primary example of why reaction content is bad for smaller creators. Parasocial relationships cause many people to avoid branching out into other avenues of content making. Why would I go watch this other person's content when I can instead just watch their content on my favorite e-celebrities 
Twitch. Hassan, as well as many other YouTubers, try to debunk this notion by bringing up extremely flawed arguments. For example, Hassan takes a screenshot of Mr. Beast and the Daily Dose of Internet saying they're fine with people reacting to the videos they make, trying to spin it as a sort of these guys still make a decent living with reactors watching them. Why is it a big deal for you guys? And you got the biggest uh, the, the biggest YouTuber on the fucking planet being like, yeah, no, it's great. I don't give a shit. Which would be a valid argument if, I don't know, one of those people wasn't the most famous content creator on the platform, and the other channel is completely derived of taking clips and videos of other peoples from all across the internet and compiling them into small digestible clip shows. Why should the daily dose of internet's opinion matter on content reaction if it isn't even his content? The biggest problem, of course, with this argument is most of the time people aren't reacting to mis Mr. Beast videos or people who have the amount of subscribers that Daily Dose of Internet does. They are instead reacting to much smaller channels that sometimes put hundreds of hours into their work. Is it at all fair that content creators can just play their entire video and re-upload it without transforming the content just because they keep the person's name in the corner of a video? <laughs> Now, as I've said before, I don't think you're singing a duet with Stalin if you make React content. But at the same time, you need to not be parasitic in your content creation. Now, I'm not a very common Twitch viewer, but I've been around long enough to know that if streamers have to grab a snack or want to take a dump or something, they put up a transition slide, which is a great, simple way to convey to your audience that you'll be gone for a minute or two and you'll be right back. But apparently those didn't work well enough because now you'll have the top Twitch streamers leaving to do whatever they have to do, playing other people's content over their absence. You can't just leave other people's content up, f*** off, then come back and act like you didn't just make revenue off of it. Now you may be thinking I'm blowing this out of the water, but once you hear me out, it'll make a little more sense. So the reason these reactors keep other people's videos up instead of having a transition slide is because it helps keep retention and keeps audience engaged. Which seems like a good argument, right? Then you get to the actual stream. They're just f***ing sitting in silence for the majority of it. The reason these streamers are stealing other people's content between their breaks is is just to keep the audience focused on the stream. People can't just consume music for two minutes, no, no. They need to constantly be consuming some sort of media that makes their fried brains delete all cognitive thought because you yourself are not entertaining in any sense of the word. You have to rely on other people's content. It's a very odd dynamic. It seems like both big and small creators love uh, others reacting to their content. It's the medium-sized ones who, say, who take exception to this. Not really. Even medium-sized ones also understand that there is, like, a way to do it and best practices. I don't know. It's, like, odd that, uh, you know, it gets overblown so much every single time it happens, especially by people who don't make content. As soon as a familiar face leaves, if there's no sort of constant jingling keys in front of these people, they're going to leave. This has to be single-handedly one of the dumbest things I can see a person do now. The best reactions people can make are the ones that show a portion of a video where the person actually had a, you know, reaction. Corey X. Kenshin comes to mind. Not only does he email all the people he reacts to, not only does he give them the time and attention they deserve when they make a genuinely good video, but he also only shows specific parts of the video that actually get a reaction out of him. Now I'm not dumb, I get your live, so it's impossible to splice up the parts where you actually have a reaction. But if you're watching a video and you look like this for 90% of it, why don't you stop the video and move on? Playing an other person's entire video, then not adding much, isn't constructive or creative. If you know a video you want to watch won't elicit a reaction, just say, I'm gonna watch it on my own time. You should check it out when you get the chance. Hassan openly says that people who don't make content shouldn't have an opinion on reactors because it really doesn't affect them. You know, it gets overblown so much every single time it happens, especially by people who don't make content. You know what I mean? It's like people who are just simply viewing content, they get really up in arms about it. And I find it really odd. I don't understand how this is an issue that uh, impacts you. 
Hassan, of course, immediately backpedals on this because he constantly has opinions on things that don't apply to him. Which is perfectly fine, I'm not against people asking questions and trying to learn more. But Hassan is so desperate to have a coherent argument that he resorts to, it doesn't affect you, so why should you care? Well, let me break it down for you, Hassan. When you and other YouTubers re-upload people's entire videos, making money off of lazy content farming and borderline theft, people are gonna have negative opinions on it. People don't like lazy content? Because it's lazy. Are people not allowed to mock lazy content creation? Questioning why someone would waste hours of their lives on some sort of content that literally gives them nothing interesting to retain? Let me say something clear. No one should respect lazy content. It rewards low effort and shies away from actual creative people who have something to say. If you disagree, then you might as well hand all content creation over to Pinky Doll and her army of NPC copycats that won't be remembered five seconds after a fucking solar flare shuts down the internet. <laughs> I hate this argument so much. Reaction-based content in this form is not free advertising. A good advertisement is meant to entice you to visit a much larger attraction. Twitch reaction videos are not this. They are straight up stealing other people's content to make money off the hard work of other creators. Think of it like a movie trailer. When a trailer has too many spoilery elements showing too much of the plot, how many times have you uttered the phrase, now what's the point of seeing this? This holds true for Twitch reactors. What's the point of any viewer clicking on and watching someone else's version of the content you are quite literally supplying them? Don't believe me? Well, check this out. During a live stream, Hassan openly shouts out a small channel and literally says, I'm surprised this channel doesn't get more love from AM Glimpse, M Glimpse. And I feel like they're very well thought out, clever, cool, interesting videos. And do you know how many subscribers he gained within three days of that live stream and writing this script? 400, which is a lot. I'm sure the guy appreciates the shout out. But keep in mind, Hassan directly says, I think this guy's content is really good and he deserves more love. Do you know how many people on average are watching Hassan every time he streams? 22,871 people. Yeah. 400 doesn't look nearly as f***ing good now, does it? And keep in mind, this is with a direct shout-out, which is extremely fucking rare for Twitch streamers to do. The most people get when their channel is viewed is their channel name in the bottom right corner, and then about five seconds of someone saying, Great vid. Keep it up. JXE was reacted to by Hassan Pike in front of 30,000 people and got an extra 180 views. No, you heard me correctly. 180. Bismuth got reacted to in front of 12k people and got 50 views. Willie Mac Show got reacted to by Moist Critical in front of 20,000 people and got 100 views. These numbers are obviously tiny, but I want to look at the best case scenario. Ludwig spent $600 to get the highest levels of production quality and voice acting to make a video specifically about Mizkif and to stroke his ego. No one had seen this video before, but even after paying Mizkif to watch it in front of 50,000 people, only around 2,000 clicked through to the original video. People who make a living off of other people's content should, at the bare minimum, plaster the original creator's name all over their stream. Almost none of these accounts that have been egregiously Yo. stolen from in the eyes of like a lot of the content creators that are talking about uh, React Gate, none of them have DMCA'd people. Anyone who has ever DMCA'd another content creator has almost never looked like the good guy. You look like a straight up evil doer if you DMCA someone's content. If you're gonna have this argument of just DMCA us if you think it's a problem, the reason people aren't DMCAing you is because they're too small to do anything about it. What exactly are they gonna do if you react to a video of theirs and it blows up massively compared to their channel? Our only way of fighting back is through a copyright strike, which, if it successfully goes through, which is extremely f***ing hard for it to do, keep in mind, is the equivalent of hobbling your f***ing channel. If I'm a small channel and I want to make it clear to you 
that I don't want you reacting to my content. The only way for me to do that in your eyes is by doing one of three strikes you're allowed on your YouTube channel. In my opinion at least, content reactions should be seen the same way as music on Twitch. It should only be okay if the creator openly says, I don't mind if you react to my content. And the only reason it's not like that is because smaller creators don't have armies of lawyers and analysts to realize when their content is being used without their permission. At the end of the day, I just don't respect lazy content. Not saying all reaction videos are lazy content, mind you. There are some reactors that I genuinely think are funny, but then again, that is due to their personality and the editing they do in the video. You know, the actual creative constructiveness. Saying nothing for a majority of the video, pausing every five minutes to say something, isn't creative or constructive by any means. It is taking a smaller YouTuber's video without their permission most of the time, and the free advertising that they like to claim it is, is the equivalent of saying you'll pay an artist through exposure. If you want to learn more about how React content is very bad for smaller creators, I definitely suggest checking out Dark Viper AU. A much larger channel by all means, but he does say a lot about React content and shows really how bad it is for smaller creators. All of his points are backed up by facts, math, and research, so I definitely suggest checking it out if you want to learn more about how bad reaction content can be. Apparently, people won't even think of subscribing unless I tell them to, so uh, do the things the algorithm likes, subscribe, and even leave a comment if you agree or disagree, and I'll hopefully see you soon. See ya.